You know what this is? It's a lightning arrester. Look, over there. It's also placed on power poles. Lightning arresters protect power systems from lightning. Today, Takumi develops this lightning arrester. Let's find out how. Follow me. Hello. There seems to be an experiment going on inside. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> that made me jump. <laughs> Today's Takumi is Osamu Yoshida. He has developed over 500 kinds of lightning arresters and surge protectors. First, I took a look at surge protectors for residential buildings. Wow, it's a model of a whole house. Is this for experiments? Yes. I had a construction company build it for us. It's for experiments to see how lightning enters a house. Let's do a test. This test will simulate lightning entering a house through the power lines. 5,000 volts will be sent to the TV set. Uh, let's start. I uh, the TV's on, right? And just like that, what? it's broken. You mean that in a normal house, it breaks just like that? Yes. That was quick. Uh, the lightning entered the house through the power lines. A fuse in the TV has blown. When appliances break due to lightning, repairing the damage can cost thousands of dollars. This is where our Takumi's surge protector comes in. Just plug the TV into the surge protector and then plug the surge protector into an outlet. Did the lightning already strike? Yes, it struck. But the TV is still working. Well, that's right. Our surge protector saved it. A bolt of lightning carries 100 million volts of electricity. It can also generate temperatures up to 30,000 degrees Celsius. So how do surge protectors shield appliances from lightning? The key is this special ceramic piece. When the voltage exceeds a certain amount, it begins to carry an electric current. When a huge amount of electricity, like from a lightning strike, reaches the ceramic piece, it safely guides the electric current away from its normal route. This system is used in both surge protectors and the lightning arresters found in factories and on utility poles. After we've installed our system in a factory, we'll check the weather forecast for the factory's area. If there is any lightning in the forecast, our employees call that factory the next day. We ask if there was any damage. It always makes us happy when our clients tell us there was no damage thanks to our product. Hearing from a satisfied customer, that's, that's the best. Yoshida took over as company president 17 years ago. At the time, the company was facing a drop in sales due to a recession. Yoshida felt that the company needed a breakthrough. They would enter a new market. He thought that if he could reproduce the effects of lightning, he could better demonstrate the benefits of his product to construction companies and appliance makers. And this would hopefully boost sales. Investing $30 million, the company built its very own Lightning Technology Center. It contains one of the largest lightning generators in the world. 
The company can test its products using models of everything from residential homes to airplanes. I got a chance to see just a fraction of the generator's power. A piece of wood is attached to electrodes. This will mimic lightning striking a tree. I wanted to watch from inside, but now I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> this one-of-a-kind device has been commissioned for testing of Japan's first compact jet airliner. The company is currently investigating the effects of a direct lightning strike on the airliner. This plane is scheduled for its first test flight next year. All our hardships have value as long as we believe that our dreams will come true. But if all we do is complain and lose faith in ourselves, our hardships become even harder. That's why it's so important to dream, especially in the most difficult circumstances. The market for lightning arresters has infinite potential. Today's hardships will give way to a better tomorrow. That's what keeps me going.